forgot my, I have to put my apron on. I'll put my apron on when I flip the phone over to you. Okay. You get me one of them. Hey everybody. <laughs> Kids put my apron on for me. How's everybody doing? <laughs> oh, I forgot my apron. Say hello, guys. I'm going to be doing chocolate gravy here. Um, this is the perfect um, breakfast for Christmas. A lot of people love this kind of breakfast for Christmas. A lot of people do pancakes and that kind of thing. But, guys, I'm going to be making chocolate gravy. I've already got uh, palm bread. I call it palm bread, palm bread or biscuit bread in the oven. Now, I have done a video making palm bread. It's on my page. And I made it with homemade syrup. I made homemade syrup with it one day. But I got some in the oven. And I'm going to get it out here. I'm going to flip the phone around. Hey, from Wisconsin. I'm going to flip the phone around. And Kenzie's going to be my little camera girl. Uh, but we're going to make chocolate gravy. I was raised on this stuff. My mom made it for us just about every morning. Especially in the summertime when we were home from school. We got chocolate gravy, fried bologna. Oh, gosh. Just good stuff. Kenzie loves fried bologna. To this day i like mine burnt but anyway i don't have fried bologna today but i am just going to show you how to make the chocolate gravy uh i do have measurements for you and just watch and listen and get your paper and pencil ready or whatever i've never had a written recipe for this i've always watched my mom make it she's made it for us we go i used to go stay on out with my stay on out with my aunts and my cousins and they would even make it for us for breakfast but yeah, if you're looking for something for Christmas morning, this is perfect. Maybe with some bacon and homemade biscuits. You can use my drop biscuits. There's a video lot that I've made that uh, easy drop biscuits. Or you can just do this palm bread, biscuit bread. Uh, I don't know. I always call it palm bread or biscuit bread. But guys, chocolate gravy is a favorite of mine. I'm from Kentucky, and we were just raised on it. We really didn't call it chocolate gravy growing up. We called it chocolate. But um, it's good, and it's more like a sauce. It's not really a gravy. It's more like a... A reduction. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's more of a sauce, I it's, guess. Yeah, I guess it's got flour. It's got like apple yeah. butter. And it's not a pudding. Pudding has eggs, not like a custard. So, and I don't even like chocolate pudding. But I'm telling you, this is good, and it's a favorite, and hopefully it'll be a favorite of yours. So, I'm going to flip the phone around. Um, let Kenzie flip the phone around. Y'all just say howdy. All right. Say hello. I guess it's comparable to like how you'd uh, put like apples. You know what I'm talking about? Like cinnamon apples. Yeah. Some people put applesauce on biscuits. Yeah. Yeah. And this goes on biscuits. And, and it's, or you can do it on pancakes. Uh, I, I actually know, I shared a video. Now, I did that video on my Facebook page. And I shared it on Mountain Cooking with Missy. But I made fried flitters. Flitters is just fried biscuit bread. It's like a, we called them flitters growing up. You can put it over that. You can put it over pancakes. It's good on fried bologna. That yeah, is the we have to best. Actually dip, we actually dip it. We actually dip our bacon down in our yes, chocolate gravy. Yes, sausage. Our bologna. Any of that, you guys. This is palm bread, okay? And look at that. That's palm bread, biscuit bread. Kind of crunchy. I like it crunchy. And it's fluffy in the middle. And we'll we'll let that set a minute. But I'm just going to pour it over that. The whole but, thing? No, 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 no. I'll show you here in a minute. So, You're going to crumble it. Yeah. Okay. I was like, yeah, what? I do have a video for that, guys. Trust me. And I have a video for drop biscuits that you can use. This will be good over. So there's palm bread. We let it cool off. I made that ahead of time. So I just make mine in a little cooker. I don't make it in a skillet or nothing. This is how I've always made it. Um, so like I said, I grew up, I got two sisters. I'm the baby, I have two older sisters. And I'm the baby of the family. And I never get, they always remind me of that. <laughs> they always remind me of that. So this has two cups of milk. So this is whole milk. If you don't have whole milk, you can do mom used cream out of a can. It's just called evaporated milk. We call it cream. 
You can use that and add some water until you got two cups, but that's two cups of whole milk. And you're going to do a quarter cup of cocoa powder. This is Hershey's cocoa. And I've never measured, but I'm just giving you all what, there is a recipe for it, but I'm just giving you all a, uh, a little rundown about what to put in it. But it don't take a lot of cocoa. And I just dropped the lid. At least you didn't drop the thing. Yeah. Ugh. I've done that. Yeah. Three quarters of a cup of sugar. Watch. Hi, guys. Oh, Kingsport, Tennessee. Hey, Kingsport. Familiar with that. Yeah. Uh, Pike County. Ooh. Dalton, Georgia. Dalton, Georgia. I've been to Dalton, Georgia. Now, got to have flour, so let's add some flour. Let me get in my... North Carolina. Okay. Now, it calls for three tablespoons of flour. You can use self-rising or all-purpose. It don't matter. Mine is uh, self-rising. Burksville, Kentucky. Hello. I don't know where that's at. Y'all ever heard of chocolate gravy? If you have or if the you one, haven't. The uh, lady from Pike County said she has. Well, of course, Pike County yeah. has. <laughs> I'm from Letcher originally, so that's where my hometown's at. Cherokee County, Georgia. Ooh, I can't even see. Williamson, West Virginia. London, Kentucky. Woo! Amherst, Ohio. Now, this is high heat, so I'm going to turn it down a little bit. Uh, you want to keep it about... This will scorch really fast, so you want to keep it... The, the, um, the secret to good chocolate gravy with no lumps is to start it out on like a medium heat, and you want to use a whisk. And you want to get your uh, lumps out. That that cocoa is kind of the last to uh, want to break up here. And you have to stir it constantly, okay? <laughs> Chunky chocolate gravy is the worst. Lumpy, no. You don't want lumpy. <laughs> now, uh, a lot of times when we was growing up, we didn't have a lot of milk. Now, we never raised cows or nothing. We raised, pig, we raised pigs and chickens. We didn't have a lot of milk other than store-bought milk. And a lot of times that would run out. This family, we were a family of five. And sometimes we didn't go to the grocery store about every two weeks. By the time, the, usually the only milk we ever, we never really drank milk. Mom would cook with milk, but she cooked with evaporated milk. Mama still chooses yeah. evaporated milk yeah. over everything. I, I cook with evaporated milk a lot. Uh, so, but a lot of times, even if you didn't have that, Mom would just make it out of water. She wouldn't add milk to it. We she made it out of water uh, yeah. the other day Yeah, when I was over there. So, I mean, you can do that. You, It's a little less calories. Now, if you wanted to leave the sugar out, you could replace this. If you were a diabetic, you could use... Uh, for sugar-free stuff, I got asked the other day. Let me show y'all what I use. So if you want to leave your sugar out, this monk fruit sweetener, I get it at Costco. I think Amazon has it. You can get it at TJ Maxx. Like, that yeah. stuff is everywhere. This measures the same as sugar. So if you have a recipe that calls for a cup of sugar, you can use a cup of this. Uh, so you could most certainly use this in that. Now, you'd have a little bit of flour in there, but... It's not like totally low carb, but it'd be a lot less calories. If you wanted to worry about the calorie content or the sugar content, then yeah, add that. You could do that. Um, the Roger is the one that's a borderline diabetic in the house, and he won't eat this anyway. <laughs> Just Kenzie and I like it. And so I don't have to worry about making it sugar. It's about free. half and half. Some people are saying they've never heard of it. And then the ones that have heard of it said they, like, grew up with it all their life. Oh, okay. Chocolate gravy? Yeah. Okay. It is really good. If you like pancakes with, like, syrup or blueberry syrup or if you like chocolate chip pancakes, then this Ooh. is pretty much, you can pour this over pancakes, y'all. You don't want to use biscuits. That's Okay. But I, I mean, we grew up, we didn't get pancakes a lot. Mom just fried flitters. Flitters. <laughs> Biscuit bread. We had bread in so many different ways. Now, we didn't make a lot of bread as far as rolls or homemade bread. The only bread we really had growing up was biscuits and cornbread. 
Someone wants, either bake it or fry it. Someone wants to know if you have a fruitcake recipe. I've never made fruitcake because I'm not a fan of fruitcake. So I do not have I like one. fruitcake. The only kind of quote fruitcake that I like, and I've never made it, but our pastors are from Georgia. He makes an orange slice cake. That thing is good. That is delicious. It's a cousin, what we say, a to cousin a to a fruitcake. And but it's it don't it's not dry. It's so good. It's very good. I like fruitcake. Now, I've never one. made it. Now I make a pound cake and I make chocolate. Now I'm fixing to make some recipes. I'm gonna make a butterfinger cake for you guys. It's more like a butterfinger trifle. Uh, because where the holidays is coming up, I wanted to make stuff like I make for Christmas. Give you all some ideas. Um, I make a butterfinger trifle cake. I make a chocolate cake that I layer with vanilla buttercream and put chocolate Pineapple on. upside down cake. I make pineapple mm. upside down. Now, I don't make, I make cakes from scratch. I have and I like to, but not every cake I make from scratch. I want to show you guys how you can take cake mix and doctor it up and make it taste just as good as a scratch cake. So some of my cakes are made with box cake mix, but I always make my frostings homemade. I don't use nothing. I don't. I do not use frosting out of a can. Um, German chocolate. Well, someone wants to know if you've ever made tomato gravy. I have not. I've never made it. I've heard of it, but I'm not a fan of it. I love tomatoes, but I I would not like it personally. I would not like it. I have heard of it, and I do like tomatoes. Honestly, I'd like to try it. I've seen Brenda Gant make it, and I love to watch her. But I do not think I'd like it. I just don't think I would like it. What is it? It's basically made like we make gravy, but they do, they put tomatoes in it. Like fresh tomatoes or like tomato I think puree? she uses canned tomatoes. You can use fresh tomatoes. Y'all, that's about ready. Look at it. You can watch it just get thick. Yeah. You know it's ready when you get... You don't want it like paste because it tastes horrible. It really is so good, you guys. This right here? Oh, I know wow. it sounds, because someone said they've never heard of it, but it looks good. It does sound unusual. Because of the gravy. Because it's just gravy, chocolate in front of but it. But it doesn't have that browned sure. gravy flour taste. No, it's not I mean? like breakfast gravy. It, milk it's gravy. good. Someone said they made your peanut butter pie, and it was really, really good. And she's going to try the chocolate gravy. Mm. Thank you. I'm glad. I love to see people make it. Now... Once you turn the heat off, you want to add just a little bit of vanilla. So that's probably a quarter of a teaspoon. Now it ain't good unless you use butter. <laughs> mm, not, yeah. Let me get me a, a little. Yes, it is more like a dessert taste than a gravy yeah, taste. Yeah, it's dessert. Definitely. It ain't like gravy gravy. They call it gravy, but... Like I said, when we were growing up, we didn't call it gravy. I know. We've always just heard it called chocolate. chocolate. Mom, I used to say, Mom, making, my nephew loves it. We were just my cousins. I, I grew up with a slew of cousins, mostly girls. There was a bunch of us. There were just a few handful of boys. And we grew up. We stayed all night with each other. We were all like stepladders. We are all close in age. And when we'd stay all night with each other, um, our mommies... My aunts would always make us all chocolate gravy and fried bologna for breakfast or whatever. And now, this kind of bread is hot, but I'm going to break it off. And I want to show you guys what it looks like in the middle. See, it's fluffy. Mm. Ooh, apple butter. I'm about to get yeah. apple He's butter out. some apple butter. Now, I'm gonna, I just tear it. I'm just going to tear it. And yeah, someone watching from Barberville. I want you a piece of bread. Mm-mm-mm. It's -mm. hot. This is how we do it. Get that hot out of the middle. Yeah, I like to pour it over my eggs, too. Mm-hmm. Because I don't like eggs. So I, the chocolate <laughs> covers up the egg taste. We just like it like this. Someone said uh, put it over vanilla ice cream. Oh, you could. That sounds good. You could. You'd have to let it cool off. It Cool off a little bit. It's Boiling over it's here. It's kind of like a fudge. It's getting really Maybe thick. a homemade fudge sauce, yeah. If you, you let it boil down, would it harden? It will scorch if you leave it on the heat, which I turned it off. Would it, like, become like fudge, though? Mm, no, like homemade fudge, no. 
Like, could you cut it? Mm mm. Okay. It'll get pasty, but it won't be solid. It'll be gloppy. Literally, tear it up just like you would your gravy. Or you can pour it over, take a biscuit, and cut it in half, and do it like that. But since I'm using palm bread, I want it crumbled. Now, this is something you gotta do. Give me a butter knife. Someone said they made your dressing the other day, and it was a big hit. Oh, good. And her, her daughters want to know the recipe, so she gave it to them. Good. That's, that makes me happy. That's what I like for y'all to try it. Let me take my whisk out. This is how I eat my chocolate gravy. I just take me wherever how much I want. <laughs> Now, I know in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee, if you go to the Five Oaks Farm House restaurant, you can get this. They serve it's it. It's good there, too. It tastes just like this. Yeah. They, um, I know people, now I like butter, so I'm putting me a good old dollop of butter, and that's a big one, but who cares? This is how I like it. I take my butter, and I swirl it around. <laughs> It's a little early to be eating this, but I'll, I mean, a little, like, late, but I don't care. Mm, brunch. Yeah. And I stir it because I like the butter in there. Now, you can put butter in it before you, um, before you, if you want to, if you're serving it, you want to put some butter in it right when you take it off the heat. It adds richness. You can do that. Mama always did that. Yeah. Someone said that they made your chicken salad last night, and it was delicious. Her husband mm. loved it. Good. I'm glad. Uh, I don't think so. Oh, Lord. It's good, yeah. I want some. This is so good. With some fried bologna or fried crispy bacon on Christmas morning. Make this for your kids. If you if you normally make, like, pancakes or whatever, make some of this put over your pancakes. Or go back and make some of them drop biscuits or make this palm bread. And go on my videos. You'll see these breads that I've made. But this, guys... It's hard to eat with your mouth full. It's hard to talk with your mouth full. Hard to talk with your mouth full. <laughs> you want back? Yes, I do. Yeah, it does kind of look like chocolate pudding, but it don't taste like chocolate pudding. Because I hate any form. It doesn't have that texture, that gelatinous, mm -hmm. jiggly, whatever. But it does kind of look like it. Kenzie's turn. Yeah, it's not like pudding. Mm. Pudding can be... Jiggly. Yeah. Yeah, pudding. Now, pudding is like like when you make a homemade chocolate pie. This is similar to that, except only thing the difference between pudding and this, or a base for a chocolate pie, is you add y yolks. You're making a custard. Now, my mamma used to make the best chocolate pies ever. Uh, I've never really made chocolate pies because I'm not really a fan of chocolate pie. I like chocolate anything. But I don't like chocolate pie because I don't like the texture. I don't like pumpkin pie either. Um, I'm more, so we're not big chocolate. Yeah, I did put sugar in it. There was three quarters of a cup of sugar. So there was, <laughs> the spoon fell down in it. You can, that, guys, if you don't eat all of it, put it in a container with a lid, put it in a refrigerator. You can heat it up the next day. And reheat it. It's good. I wouldn't do it more, no more than two days. But if you made too much, and that, that serves quite a bit uh, for us. Now, that would not last enough. Around our family, if there was all of us together, my nephew, my Niece. all of my sisters and all of us, we that would we would ever want to eat that. But see, we'd have bacon or fried bologna with it. Or, it's good um, with scrambled eggs. Too. Yeah, scrambled eggs, the, the works. We do what we call the works. But um, but that's plenty. That's pretty much, that'll feed quite a bit. But there was, um, so there was two cups of milk, three tablespoons of flour, any kind of flour you want to use, three quarters of a cup of white sugar, quarter cup of um, cocoa. So whisk it on a medium heat until it starts to thick. And 
add about an eighth a teaspoon or a fourth a teaspoon of vanilla and some butter to it and it's delicious. Make your tongue slap your brain down. My papa used to say that. And I remember when I was growing up, after I, after we'd already eat, mom would kind of leave it sitting on the stove. Kenzie's going to get some apple butter for her biscuit. Even after I would come back later, mom would kind of leave it on the stove. And I remember taking my bread, a little piece of bread, and doing that right there because I wanted a bite. And I would take a bite. Mm. Oh, my goodness. Oh, girl. <laughs> Three o'clock in the evening and I'm eating chocolate gravy and biscuits, but it's all right. Roger's going to, he wants some, he's frying some pork belly for supper. So, but guys, it's really good. It really is. So try it, try it, see how you like it. If you don't return out, what, what I always suggest is keep going, keep trying stuff. That is the best apple butter I've ever had. Kenzie, I got that at Rural King the other day. Yeah. Where'd it come from? It's got a lid on it. Is it Amish? It is so good. But yeah, we love apple butter. I don't know where that came from. But anyway, try it. I haven't made it in a long time, I remember. Yeah. Anyway, try it, guys. Let me know if you make it. Let me know how you like it. And um, I'm telling you, try it for your kids. Try it. If they're young, start them on it now. It kind of be... Kind of can be an acquired taste, like pickle baloney. You know, I was raised on pickle baloney and crackers. Kenzie won't touch it with a 10-foot pole, but I love pickle baloney. And, you know, to me, there ain't nothing better than pickle baloney. Roger won't eat it either because he wasn't raised on it either, but I was. And he wasn't raised on chocolate gravy either, so he yeah, won't touch it. he's from Michigan, so. Well, he was born in Michigan. They moved back to Kentucky when he was, like, fourth, fifth grade. But still, he wasn't raised on some of the food that I was, so. But anyway, <laughs> guys, chocolate gravy is one of our favorites. It's a, it, my maiden name is Fields. We call it a Fields family favorite. It is so good. Fields family favorite. Yeah. FFF. It is so good. It is really good. So I hope you try it. Share the video. I appreciate it. Got over 5,000 followers. I am just like floored and just so, I feel so honored and blessed to have met everybody. And everybody's been so nice and kind. And this is this is like been a dream of mine. Can't even tell you. I've talked about this and toyed over it, prayed about it, and God was like back in September, He's like, do it now. It's time. And it was the right time. And since then I've got over five thousand followers and uh just meeting people that I love people. I like talking with people, I like talking with people and uh teaching them how to cook, showing them what I do. Uh, and helping people and giving tips and that's what it's all about and I appreciate you guys do you have a fruitcake recipe I do not have a fruitcake recipe because I've never really made fruitcake and I don't really like fruitcake so I've never made a fruitcake recipe uh, before and um, but I'm out I am going to be sharing some more stuff I'm going to be doing a butterfinger trifle I'm going to be doing my triple layer chocolate cake with butter cream frosting and ganache I'm going to be doing a pound cake with mm. buttercream sauce lemon. and lemon. Yeah, Kenzie loves that. Um, I'm going to be making a broccoli casserole. I'm going to be making homemade hot rolls. I'm trying to think of some more stuff I'm going to try to make for you all for the upcoming holidays to give you some ideas. And I'm going to try to do a skillet of fried sweet taters. Now, we don't, we don't do sweet potato casserole. We never have. My Aunt Patty made the best fried sweet taters for Thanksgiving and Christmas. She did them in a cast iron skillet. Now, I cook a lot in cast iron. And a lot of my cast iron skillets are old. My mamaws, they were my mamaws, and I've had them all these years. But she made the best sweet taters. We call them sweet taters. And she fried them. She candied them, and she fried them in a skillet with butter. She just put sugar in them and a little bit of cinnamon and butter, and that was it. And they would fry and get brown and caramelized. Oh, gosh. They're tender on the inside and crispy on the inside. They had a little crisp. They're they were the so best. Good. You didn't eat, she didn't even have to put them in the oven. And sometimes for she before she'd take them off the skillet, she'd top them with a little bit of marshmallows and, and nuts. And 
Oh, y'all, that's the best way to eat them. And I am going to make some of them for you guys and show you how we do them. Because um, we don't really do sweet potato pie or casserole. Um, I'm, I'm, not a, I'm not really a fan because I don't like texture. Certain textures I can't hardly take. But sweet potatoes like that is the bomb. Can so add the nuts, though? Oh, uh, well, be like in a, a pie? pie? I don't know. Or just put, like, a ton of marshmallows on top. Well, sweet potato pie and casserole, two different things. Pie is yeah, like a sure. pie, like pumpkin pie. You can't pie. put marshmallows on pie. Yeah. But anyway, I appreciate you guys watching. I hope you make this. If you do, you let me know. And um, just get a pen and paper ready if you're watching and just go back and jot it down what I did. It's really easy and watch how I did it. And um, I did it right at the beginning. That way you can get an idea because I want you to make it. And uh, let me know how you like it. Uh, if it needs a little more sugar, you might need to add a little more. You can back off the sugar if you want. Um, I think the three quarters cup is about right. Um, and it's really good. It's so good. So I appreciate y'all for watching Mountain Cooking with Missy, where it's nothing fancy. Just good eating. Kenzie said, just good eating. I appreciate it, guys. Y'all are awesome. Y'all have a good day. I will talk to y'all later. Be on the lookout for some more videos. I'm going to be uploading some stuff. Um, and, um, thank you guys. Y'all have a good day.